Hi, it's Dorothy Guining with Scrapbooking Quebec. Today, I'm participating in the YouTube collaboration for the love of crafting and sharing. In October, we are using our dies, and I will put links to all the other participants below, so be sure to check them out. I'm going to be creating the layout you see on the screen, and I will be making all of my embellishments, including that big title, with tools from my stash. The inspiration for my design comes from a class I'm taking right now called 6x6 Paper Pads. It's by Allison Davis at Scrapbook Generation, and I will link up Scrapbook Generation below as well. I'm going to be doing page one of a double page sketch that's part of this class. Now, page one stands alone as a single page layout, no problem. But if you want to see how I put together the second page, I will walk you through that process at the very end of this video. It comes together really, really quickly. Here's what I'll be using. I have a paper pad, of course. That one there is from Stampin' Up! called Warmth and Cheer. I also selected some coordinating cardstock, and I went through my tools looking for dies that would support my theme. Now, this is an on-the-trail, outdoorsy, hiking-type page, so I have those trees. I also needed something to create a large, dynamic title, and so I selected tools in accordance to that. All of these tools will be listed in the description box below, and I'll also talk about them throughout the process. I did prepare my foundation page in advance with three sheets of paper and I gutted two of them. So I made this frame style foundation. There is a tutorial on my channel where I do that. So I link that up below as well. I matted my photo and I'm showing you that paper pad there. That one there is from Stampin' Up. It's a Christmas themed one, but this is not a Christmas themed page. And the first thing I'm going to do is cut out a whole bunch of circles with this set of dies. It's called Stitched Shapes by Stampin' Up. It's been around for a few years. It has basic shapes and the outside of the shapes, there's a stitched edging around embossed. I really, really love them. They are still available in the catalog. So what I'm going to do is cut out in three different pattern papers a whole bunch of circles. So with each one of these six by six papers, I can cut out nine of these circles. So I will put measurements for everything I'm doing on the screen, but they are just under two inches each, these circles. And I don't think you can see them on the screen, but there is a lovely stitching around the outside of all of these. I'm going to stop my camera. I will continue cutting out these circles and then you're going to see I have a whole pile of them on my desk. What I'm going to be doing with these is creating kind of a grid on my foundation page. So there you have it, all my circles. So I'm going to place my grid on the page looking for a pattern that pleases me. And this is according to the sketch that's part of the class. I can't show you the sketch because it's paid content, but you can follow along what I'm doing. Basically, you leave out a row and that is where I will eventually be placing my large title. So now that I'm happy with the placement, I'm going to adhere all of this to the page. This was the most difficult part of the entire process. So what I'm doing right now is marking a point on each side of the paper at six inches. And then I use that as a guide to find the middle of the page. I drew myself a little T in the middle of the page, and that is where I placed the first circle. From there, I'm going to build out and create my grid with these circles. What you're going to see me do, though, is put my T-square there because I want to keep them all at the same level. And I'm going to adhere next the circle on the far left because I want to ensure that the circles on the outer edge are all one inch in from the frame. Once I adhere that outer circle, then I position the middle circle in between. So there you have it. I have an entire row done. I'm going to do the very same thing on the vertical, starting in the middle, where I adhere the circle at the top of the page, one inch down from the frame. And then I'm going to position the circle in the middle of those two circles. I stop the camera and I continue adhering my grid in that fashion with that space 
for my title, which will be placed later on. I missed a bit of footage there. All I did was cut out my frame, the black mat for my photo, and I created myself two tags out of grid paper, and that's going to be for journaling. That was with a tag punch from Stampin' Up. And now what I'm going to do is cut out a whole bunch of trees. So this is another stamp, uh, I'm sorry, another die set from Stampin' Up. It's called Pine Woods Dies. Again, this is part of a Christmas collection. These ones are new from Stampin' Up. So I first I cut out those black pieces. They're like tree shadows, I guess. And I used just the base plate for my Big Shot for that. But for these green trees here, you're going to notice in a minute, they are more detailed. So I changed the platform on my Big Shot for the precision plate, and that just helps cut out detailed pieces easier. It's just easier to cut out these small pieces, even though I was still poking out with that paper piercing tool. So I stopped my camera. I have a bunch of trees. I have my two tags and now I'm double matting my photo and adhering those tags in and around the photo. One goes right behind the double photo mat and one in between the photo and the photo mat. It just adds that extra layering look. Now I'm adhering these trees together. So as you can see, what I'm doing is I'm putting adhesive with that wax paper adhesive. It's called Sticky Specs. I'm putting it on the green trees and then I'm adhering those green trees on top of the black shadows. And I'm creating a cluster just above those tags. So ultimately what I'm doing here is I'm creating kind of a giant cluster that includes the photo, the journaling tags, and some embellishing. I will go back and add some more embellishing later on, but that's basically it. I will just complete it later on. I'm going to adhere this to the page because I do know, according to the sketch in the class, this photo kind of goes in that title block a little bit. The title overlaps the photo a little bit. Now I'm showing you those large dies there. They are called large letter frameless. They are old, retired from Stampin' Up, but I absolutely love them. They are like two inch letters. So I cut out the word lookouts in two different cardstocks in advance and adhered them one on top of the other. That's green and black. And I showed you a second set of dies. That one there is called stitched letters. They're from Lawn Fawn. So, so far I've got lookouts on the trail. And on the trail, which is in the beige smaller letters, actually those are tripled up. Each letter has three adhered together, and it kind of created a chipboard look to those letters. I'm getting out another die here. It's from a collection called Amazing You or Celebrate You Thinlets from Stampin' Up, and I'm using the word amazing. So I'm still using the precision plate because you're going to see the word is really tiny. So my title is going to be amazing lookouts on the trail. And this is plural because the second page, which I'll show you at the very end of this video, has photos of other lookouts that were along this trail. So I'm layering up the word amazing on top of lookouts. And because amazing is so fine and small, you can still tell the word lookouts is there. So it's kind of a fun way to create titles. Same thing with on the trail. On, I'm positioning it at the end of the word lookouts, but the trail, I'm going to overlap it a bit on top of the word lookouts. You're still going to be able to tell it says lookouts, but it just, it's a way of creating titles in a dynamic way. I'm just playing with the title here. So now I'm going to adhere all of this to the page. And in a moment, I stop and I continue adhering it to the page. But when I come back, I'm going to show you a piece of paper. And what I have done is I took that word amazing and I cut it out another three times in white cardstock. And then I adhered the beige that I cut out on camera on top of it. Again, kind of creating that chipboard effect like I did with the words on the trail. So while I'm doing that, I just want to talk a little bit about letter dies because they are kind of pricey and if ever you were 
thinking about investing in letter dies, I do have a word of advice. You don't need tons of them. In my case, I don't have tons. I have a few different sizes and that works for all my titles. But what's really important is that you know and recognize your own style and tastes. For example, I like blocky letters, so that's what I'm going to invest in. I bought one set of dies that I regret and they were script letters. I can't seem to work with them. I just don't think they reflect my style. What you see me doing now is just finishing off my page. So I added a little row of leaves just above the word lookouts there underneath the tags. I'm adding a little bit of foam adhesive behind one of those trees that's peeking out from behind the tags just to add a bit of dimension. And now what you see me doing is creating reinforcers for these tags. So I'm using a hole punch and then a half inch circle punch. I created two black rings and then in a moment I simply will add some twine to that and my tags will be finished. Basically my layout is pretty much done here. This came together very very quickly. I absolutely loved this class. It's only been one week. I just started this class. It's a 20 week class and there is a different double page sketch for each week. Anyway, if you hang around for a minute, I will walk you through the process of page two. Like I said, this page was the most difficult of the two and the page two came together very, very quickly. All I did was cover a piece of ugly cardstock because I made sure it was a paper that I didn't like with four pieces of six by six paper from a paper pad. Then I added some faux stitching around the outside edge of the entire page. I double matted four photos. So I created a block of four photos, then I double matted them. Mine are four inch photos. I adhered that to the middle of the page. Then I simply created two embellishment clusters that were repeats of what I did on the first page. So, so easy. Everything is there. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to Scrapbooking Quebec, I'd be absolutely thrilled if you did. Also, don't forget to check out all the other participants. Their links are written in the description box below. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day. Bye-bye.